Hey guys, coming to you from Carlisle, Pennsylvania. We're here with Jim Heiser. There's my lovely husband, Rich Smithson. Jim here um, does some, or actually has got some knives with us because he's one of the newest CCA members. And he's going to talk a little bit about why he's designed the knives he's designed and what he uses them for. And hopefully he's going to share some of his secrets with us. And on top of that, let us know where he's going to be coming from or what class he's going to be teaching and all that fun stuff. So take it away, fellas. All right. Well, a lot of you know that we've made a knife for him, but there are, I believe, four different knives and two skews that not very many people's ever seen. And these are the skews. And this is a standard mm -hmm. rough out blade that we have but his is two inches long these are the knives that are different that are typically not in our normal knives that we sell they're in the jim heiser signature knives. so we're going to have jim show some of the cuts and the reason why he likes the profile or the flexibility of some of these blades mm -hmm. And Jim, when you show us what they are, would you be so kind as to let us know what signature series that you're using as you use it so sure. they know? Okay. Awesome. The first knife I had you guys do for me is what we call our number one. And uh, I started out carving. I like the flexible blade. And the manufacturer that I used to use um, quit making his knives. And what had happened, I had one of his knives that broke. And I kind of refashioned the blade and had something I really liked. And about that time, I heard that you guys were making a flexible blade, and that's when I reached out to you about maybe see if we could do something. But I, uh, I like uh, the, the flex in the blade, so like if you're coming up alongside of a hat or something, the, the blade, oh, blade will roll, and mm -hmm. sometimes the wood breaks. But, uh, but it's just, I, I just like that flex, and it works real well for the style of carving I do, because probably 90% of my carving on the characters I do with a knife, and then I follow up with some gouges and stuff. Then the second knife that we talked about was kind of, I think you call it a spear point, but it has mm -hmm. the same flexible blade and it's two inch. But what I like about that is if I'm setting a face. And that's the number one there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I'm back to the number one here just to kind of set an angle here. But um, I can take this blade here, and even though it's a long blade, I can just use the tip of that and come right up through here and just take a, like a little scooping cut but I, I don't have to worry about dragging the whole blade across the face. And it works real well for me, but I've had some other friends that have bought these knives and they, that are used to carving with curved blade knives, and they use those a lot uh, just because they like the long reach with this blade. And that's, the, once again, is the number two, and it's flexible. But what I found as time went on, there's some people that being so flexible and long, that was uh, they were a little nervous with that blade, afraid it was going to break on them, and I've not had a problem with that happening. So then, I guess one time we were out of Converse, I was talking to you about shorting the blade up, so we went to an inch and a half blade. So it's the same tip, and um, all of a sudden, then my wife, that's become one of her favorite knives. But it's got the little uh, rounded blade on it, the spear point. And it, but it's just not near as long a blade. It's still got some slight flex to it, but uh, it works, works well. For me, this is more or less a specialty knife. It's not a knife that I use that often because uh, the number one is my go-to knife and I just, uh, I've had real good luck for it. And every now and then, if I'm really blocking in something, then I'll go to the rough out knife. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was actually when we were first talking about doing our knives. It was one that we, we weren't quite on the same page with, but I liked it so much, I just thought we would keep it because mm -hmm. uh, there's so many good rough out knives on there. I didn't feel I needed a rough out knife, but I, I like this one so much, we just kept it with my catalog of knives then. And which number is that? What signature Th series? This is the signature three, which is the rough out knife. Mm -hmm. so and the have, shorter speared one that you just used? That's the 2S, which, the which two is S. The, the standard two, but we put the S on it just because it's the shorter knife. Makes sense. Yeah. And then uh, somewhere along the way, I was working on actually th this particular carving here. And uh, of course, that's before it had the base and everything. And I was having trouble getting up in along the collar cleaning. And I had a piece of metal that I kind of sharpened up. And I come up with this long skew. And it gets right up in there. It's real nice for uh, cleaning up. Of course, my sharpening skills weren't as good as what you guys are. But it got me through the project. But it got me thinking that maybe there was, uh, you know, we should cover with these. And... Uh, I've sold a few. I don't have a lot of them, but just to add to the catalog then, and that's the Series 4. 
Okay. Uh, it's Series not four. on your website or anything, but it's one that can be if people would like a longer skew. Mm -hmm. And then it's just a sharper angle also, which is another thing that I like with it. And that's yeah. made out of rough out steel, so yeah. it's got some backbone behind it. So it's made out of rough out steel, which is a .050 thickness then. Okay. And then, not that I needed it, but we just uh, decided to add like a standard uh, skew, because most of your standard skews, that's the angle they come with. But there's every now and then that that just comes in handy. And once again, I consider these specialty tools. It's not something I use that often, but boy, when I need it, they're, they're good to have. Mm -hmm. and so. I, and which number is this one, Jim? This one would be number five. Signature Series 5. Yeah. Okay, and you'll notice on Jim's <laughs> knives, he has a rat on them. <laughs> Rondell. Yeah. That's Rondell Boudreaux. So there you go. He's a Cajun rat. Yeah. He likes so, chickens. So he likes chickens. <laughs> you hear that, Bruce Hand? He likes chickens. Likes chickens. <laughs> so, uh, Jim, are you going to, um, hey, Rich, if you can just get a little bit more cozier, maybe I can get both of you in here. Uh, not that I'm trying to get him to mess up. Jim, can you tell us where you're going to be at, where you're going to be teaching, or things yeah, you might have next, going on? The next class we'll be teaching would be the, the Northeast Woodcarvers Roundup in Hundell, Pennsylvania. That's uh, July 16th uh, to uh, that Thursday. I don't remember the date. Mm -hmm. Then the following week, I'm going to, this will be my first year at the Buckeye Roundup out in uh, Pico, Ohio. So I'm looking forward to that, maybe meeting some new friends and uh, just mm -hmm. sharing wood carving. So, awesome. Uh, and then uh, August we'll be out in uh, Converse, Indiana for the CCA competition, and uh, I'll be one of the instructors out there this year. Awesome. Rich and I will also be there with you in Piqua, Ohio, with the Buckeye Roundup. We're setting up and selling, and Rich will be sharpening knives. So if you all are going to be in the area, it's, um, July, it's around the fourth week. Um, or the, excuse me, the third week of July, I believe it is, like July 23rd or something like that, 25th, 25th okay, 25th, 26th, and so forth. It's a Wednesday through Saturday um, in July. Mm -hmm. So if you all are around that area in that time and you want to come join us, you can always feel free to stop in. And, or if you need some knives or tools sharpened, Rich is going to be there. I'll be cracking a whip. So. And then we'll have these there. Yeah. Yep. These are that. sharpened on both sides, so you can come. Oh, yeah. Them. See, the this lighting's way? not real good that way. This or way. this way. Yeah, so that's the skew that's sharpened on both sides. And they're both using their rough-out steel, right, honey? Yes. Yep. So this is um, his arsenal, if you will, for wood carving. And Jim also teaches and does some classes and has some invitations and stuff to people here at his own home because he has a shop out back. So him and his wife, Joan, um, obviously they entertain. They're entertaining us today because we're here on vacation, and they were kind enough to invite us into their home. So, and I don't see anybody asking any questions. There's some people that are viewing it, but there's no questions to answer. So I'm glad that Jim was able to do this and was, you know, would grace us with uh, spending some time with us. So if anybody don't have any questions, do you gentlemen have anything you'd like to add to the Healthy Knives folks? No. no. Keep buying knives. Or be square. Yeah. <laughs> Stay sharp. Never dull. Well, your orders. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hope you guys have a blessed day. Take care. Bye.